Kia ora koutou katoa. My name's Eloise Wallace. I'm the director at Tairawhiti Museum. Today it's the 19th of September, Women's Suffrage Day. On this day in 1893, 127 years ago, New Zealand became the first nation in the world where women successfully fought for and won the right to vote in parliamentary elections. So the passing of the Act in 1893 was a close run thing. The Legislative Council had blocked the bill in 1891 and 1892 due to the petitioning of liquor interests who were worried that women were more likely to vote for prohibition. New Premier Richard Seddon also tried to sabotage the bill, but on the day, two legislative councillors switched their votes to embarrass Seddon and the bill passed 20 votes to 18. We all know the name Kate Shepherd, but a campaign of this magnitude was the work of many women and one of those leaders was Margaret Seafright, based here in Gisborne. Kate, Margaret and many other women rallied New Zealanders to their cause. They presented massive petitions to Parliament in 1891, 1892 and 1893. The final petition, presented in 1893, represented almost a quarter of the adult female population of New Zealand. So I'm standing here today next to the Memorial to Margaret, which is next to the Rose Gardens and the council buildings on Fitzherbert Street. Margaret was so highly regarded by the community of Gisborne that when she died in March 1905, the committee was established to find ways to raise funds to commemorate her life's work here in the city. Margaret was born in 1844 and grew up near Edinburgh, where she later trained as a nurse. She arrived in Wellington in 1878 at the age of 34, and seven days later married William Seafright, a solicitor, a man she had known in Scotland, who was now a widower with two small daughters, Berta and Meta. They moved to Gisborne in 1883 and purchased land on number six for Topical Block. They built a house overlooking Gisborne called Hjaltland, the Viking name for Shetland. While the house is no longer there, you can still find Seavright Lane, which comes off Russell Street near Waitiata Park. Nearby is Richardson Avenue, named after her father John, who came out to live in Gisborne in 1884. And Adams Road, coming off Seavright Lane, is named after the Seavright's gardener, James. Margaret and William later had a daughter, Wilma, who married Kate and Walter Shepherd's son, Douglas, in 1908. Margaret had a lifelong interest in politics, particularly in regard to issues relating to women and children. She was a staunch upholder of temperance, that is, abstinence from alcoholic drink. She also taught in Gisborne's technical school and urged the law to be changed so that children older than 13 remain at school. So a very special treasure we have here at the museum is Margaret Seafright's Bible. It's inscribed with her name, Maggie Richardson, 25th of December 1852 in the front. So we believe she may have been given this as a birthday present when she was eight years old. Throughout the book, it's inscribed with small annotations that she's made from the year she was about 13 years old um, through to about 16. Her friends said that she was a woman of fine insight and great brain capacity and her unique personality made her the most outstanding woman. She never thought of herself at all and lived entirely for the cause. Underpinning all that Margaret did was an unwavering moral conviction that women and men had equal responsibilities and should therefore have equal opportunities. It was decided that a drinking fountain, something that would be of practical and of lasting benefit to her community, in the shape of an obelisk would be an appropriate memorial. The cost of £175 for the obelisk, made of Aberdeen granite, was raised mainly in the community by the woman of Gisborne. The memorial was unveiled by the mayoress Elizabeth Townley in Peel Street on the same day that New Zealand was named a Dominion, the 26th of September 1907. At that time, it was the first public monument unveiled to a woman in New Zealand. The choir from Te Rau College sang and messages were read from Kate Shepherd and Sir Robert Stout, a noted supporter of women's suffrage. Agnes Scott, secretary of the Memorial Committee, said that she hoped the council would see it was kept in good order, for it was the first case in which women had erected anything to a woman. In 1925, the Memorial Committee members wrote to the Poverty Bay Herald requesting that a pie cart be discouraged from parking alongside the memorial. At some stage, the water supply to the fountain was cut due to the town's dogs drinking from the fountain. In 1933, the National Council of Women requested it be moved to a site in Reeds Quay near the Peel Street Bridge, and it was reconnected to the town's water supply. It remained there for the next 60 years. 
In 1993, the year of the centennial of women's suffrage, it was relocated again to its present site and was rededicated by Mary's Barbara Clark on the 19th of September. Suffrage Day isn't just about celebrating New Zealand's suffrage achievements, it's thinking about how we can make progress as a society to benefit women and therefore all of the community. Margaret Seafright knew well that the fight didn't end in 1893 when women gained the vote. One year later, on the 19th of September 1894, she addressed the new Gisborne Women's Political Association and she urged the women there to use their voice and vote. I'd like to finish with Margaret Seafright's most famous quote. What do women want, she asked. We want men to stand out of our sunshine, that is all.